In 1992, Winona LaDuc wrote an article, and um, it was about the uranium in the southwest where the Navajos live and up here where we are in the Northern Plains. And she mentions national sacrifice areas. The Navajos are a national sacrifice area, the Great Sioux Nation. We're a national sacrifice area. Sacrifice to uranium production, radioactive pollution. That's genocide. That's pure out and out genocide. It's like if they if they wanted to do away with the Navajo Nation and wanted to do away with the Great Sioux Nation, why didn't they just drop an atomic bomb on us? A nuclear weapon. Because that's what they have done. Just south of here, uh, here in Tupa City, in a, a little community called Black Falls, people were drinking uh, contaminated water, contaminated with arsenic and uranium. And this is due to the fact that um, here's an area, again, uh, gave a big contribution to the Cold War. Mining was carried out uh, to uh, extract the uranium. Uh, intensely and then no cleanup was done they just abandoned took everything and uh, and, and um, left everything behind as a result of that where these old springs were they got contaminated our treaty territory covers Montana North Dakota Wyoming and Nebraska too parts of those areas as the breadbasket of the world because it's an, these are all agricultural states. They <clears throat> breed cows for beef, and then all the wheat, corn, soybeans, a whole lot of um, rye, oats, a lot of um, agricultural products. These are all being contaminated by radioactive particles and have been for 30, 40, 50 years. How much food is sent out of here that is radioactive? Hydro Resources Incorporated is sitting about five miles from here in Church Rock Community and Crown Point Community, which is Navajo country. And there's, they've been sitting here for the past 25 years uh, waiting to open up these uranium mines with a technology that's called in situ uranium. And it threatens our groundwater, our aquifer, our drinking water, which is, has one of the most um, pristine water um, in this area, and it serves about 30,000 um, families. They still do active mining, and they're trying to build new mines. And so then, in order to get away from the word uranium, they don't talk about the radioactive qualities of rare earth elements. So now you see new applications for rare earth mining. There are, uh, this woman, a uh, non-Indian woman, did a st uh, study, a research study, and she found through EPA, the EPA uh, documents, that within our treaty territory there are 2,885 abandoned, open pit, uranium mines and prospects. But the other part is that the coal that comes out of here is laced with uranium. They never talk about that. All the coal that's shipped to both the East Coast and West Coast from Wyoming or North Dakota is laced with uranium. All the coal-fired power plants in Wyoming and North Dakota that burn this coal, that smoke that comes over the Black Hills, comes on to all of the people, has uranium particles, radioactive particles in it. Because the United States does not monitor or regulate radioactive particles from coal-fired power plants. We in this region have the highest rate of lung cancer in the whole United States. When the bottom fell out of the um, uh, uranium in the 70s, right after Three Mile Island, all of these companies just left. They left. Uh, and they weren't just big companies either. They could have been just a rancher mining in his, one of his fields, and they just left in there. States around here, no way will the congressmen or the senators ever want to talk about it because these states also rely on tourism. Mount Rushmore, how many tourists of the three million tourists will come here if they know that when they're drinking water in these motels in Rapid City, 
that water contains uranium. We, we have written a bill, we're trying to get a bill passed for the cleanup of all these abandoned uranium mines. When we talk about freedom, we, want, we don't want to be slaves to the utility companies as well. We want housing that's 90% energy efficient. We want energy produced through their father, um, son, and we want energy from our, our winds. You know, there's ways that we can create our communities that, we're, that we can um, honor our traditional teachings. We need to go back to our roots, back to the way our forefathers and, and our, our uh, grandmothers uh, taught about um, take care of the land, that we are just here to um, borrow the land. It's the whole country that needs to wake up. Every senator and congressman in this country should want to pass our little bill to clean up all these abandoned uranium mines and to put a moratorium on new mining until all of this whole country is clean again. It's dirty right now. It's polluted with radioactive particles and nobody knows. You know, as we rise up, I don't care what community it is, you know, we're rising up to the corporate beasts. It's a monster. And uh, we're, in our legends, we have monster slayers. And today we need modern day monster slayers in the legal area and environmental area. And in um, building the capacity of the communities to, to raise their voices and not to be afraid. It should be on the front pages like of the New York Times or Washington Post, but it's not. Why? Do they want the Americans also not to know of the danger that's coming to everybody? It's not just us. We're just the miners' canary. Um, as the native people, native people, that um, we want to pursue a way of life that was uh, sustainable and was a way of life that our forefathers lived, where they um, had their flock of sheep and goats and and they uh, managed the land to where um, uh, they could um, uh, maintain a, a, a lifestyle that uh, afforded them um, a good life. We human beings are also the pollen of the universe. That's who we are and we must preserve the sacred and the sanctity of our, our ancient teachings and our old ways, it takes all of us, red, yellow, black, and white, to make this happen.